So, on this tutorial, I will show you how to export your project. If you've watched the previous tutorial, I've shown you how to publish a storyboard. And now I'm about to show you how to export a project. So, to export a project, let's go into File, Export to. You can open the export footage panel like this by hitting the shortcut shift Control e or shift Command e for the Mac users. Within the export footage panel, you have four different tabs. We have the project display, the clip display, the clip layer structure, the custom brush display. For this last tab, um, well, I won't talk about this one since it doesn't make any sense since we haven't seen anything about the custom brush yet. So let's focus on the three tabs only. So first on the project display. So on the project display, I have the possibility to for example, to the place I want to save my project, click on the Browse. I can choose if I want to export my project as a sequence or as a single image. If I use single image, I will export only the current image I can see here in the display. By the way, you can eventually move in the timeline just by moving this cursor like this. You have the possibility to change the format by clicking here. So you have traditional file format like PNG or TGA or JPEG. And you also have ancient uh, format like Cineon or Deep or uh, Hilbian. They are very, very old. Let's focus on some traditional file formats. For example, for video, I advise you to use the AVI internal format. The AVI internal is well developed by the TV Paint developers. So it's a good deal between quality and between uh, the size of the project. You can eventually use the QuickTime, but I don't advise you, and for several reasons. The QuickTime format has been abandoned by Apple in 2011. And QuickTime has never been developed for 64-bit operating systems. So it means if you are running TV Paint, the professional edition in 64-bit, the QuickTime proposed here, that's by the way, it's only available, if I'm not wrong, uh, in the Mac version, but I'm not totally sure of this. Anyway, the version you have here is not the real QuickTime codec. It's a QuickTime using a different library. So we can't guarantee the good quality of the export. And by the way, you won't have the possibility to change the parameters of the QuickTime, just like you should be used to. I mean, uh, for example, you can't change the compression, like using H264 compression, or uh, changing the frame rate or other stuff. So that's why I advise you to use the AVI format if you need to export as a video. The other solution is installing the 32-bit version of TV Paint. You can do this, there's no problem about this. You can install the 32 and the 64-bit on the same computer and using the 32-bit version to export in QuickTime, using the real QuickTime codec. Okay, so if, for example, if you use the AVI internal format, you have different mode compression and you also have the quality I will talk about another file format like the PNG. There are some interesting stuff to say. So with the PNG, you have the possibility to change the mode and especially use the RGBA file format if you need to keep the transparency. And if you need to keep the transparency, don't forget to uncheck the background option just here. Because if you let it check, well, you will export the white background at the same time. Then regarding the alpha channel, because since we are uh, using uh, the RGBA mode, there is an option about the alpha. Many people think they have to use the pre-multiply option, and that's completely wrong because it gives many errors on the way the alpha channel is managed. Always use no pre-multiply. can be a little weird because uh, we can still see the black background, but it's normal. I can guarantee you that if you are in RGBA mode, no multiply and the background is not checked, you will have a transparent image. And last word about the compression. PNG compressions is lossless. I mean, you won't lose any quality. 
when you are changing this value here, you're just changing the calculation time necessary to render a PNG file. I mean, if you are using a compression equal to one, the calculation will be very fast, but then file size will be very big. And if you're using a compression equal to 10, the calculation will be much longer, but then your file will be tinier. Anyway, if you are using a compression equal to 10, make sure you are using a powerful computer, especially if your sequence is long and if your project has a really big size, because it can take a lot, a lot of time. So, now about the project view. So I just check again background because then it's more comfortable for you and for me. So about the view just here, we have the choice between the project and the camera view. So with project, we just have the full project with the whole drawing area. And if I check camera, here I have the camera view and is camera moves. I can also change the size of my export. So by default, my project has this size and here I'm about to export to this size so I can eventually play no conversion, but I can still Choose any other conversion. If you are using another, another format, especially if you are changing the frame rate and the pixels per ratio and even the field, then some option here will be necessary. So if you're changing the aspect ratio, check or uncheck this option if you want to adapt uh, the project to the new ratio. Stretch to frame rate. If you change the frame rate here from 24 to 25, well, make sure that you check stretch to the frame rate. It means then that the speed you had when you were watching the animation 24 image per second will be the same. I mean, the feeling will be the same with 25 images per second. If you don't check this, then your animation will be read faster since uh, you will have 25 images per second and not 24. Then you have also the time interpolation. If you check the time interpolation and you use uh, something much bigger than 25, I mean, for example, if you use NTC, yes, like this. Um, if you use the time interpolation, it means that in order to give the same feeling um, when you are watching your animation, between, I mean, if you were in 24 image per second and then in nearly 30 image per second, if you check time interpolation, it means that sometimes two images will be visible at the same time. If you remember, it's like when we were uh, using the increase or decrease layer length. Just watch the tutorial about this if you want to know more about. It works more or less the same. So if you check time interpolation, you have several images visible on, at the same time. And if you don't check time interpolation, you will have only uh, one image and just some instances will be longer than other instances. That's also the same if you do the contrary uh, regarding the frame rate. So if you're using a frame rate uh, smaller than the original frame rate, using time interpolation will apply several images on the same image. And if you don't check time interpolation, it may cut some images. And the last option, split scenes, will split every clip, every... So every clip like this, separately. And yes, and last little stuff about exporting. We have here a mark-in and mark-out option. So for example, if you don't want to export the entire project, you can use the marking and the mark code to export between 105 and 173 images. So then regarding the other tabs, we have the clip display. So it's we have more or less the same options, uh, except uh, the split scene just here. And we also have options here, notes and slates, I forgot to talk about them. Uh, notes and slates are really useful. Notes will export the note area, the one, you know, available 
above the sound, uh, the sound tracks, you know, just here. And the slate will bring some information about your project. So you may see the name of your project, the name of the clip, uh, the number of image, the date, TV pin logos, and the name of the creator, a very talented girl. And then let's focus on clip layer structure since clip display and project display are more than the same, except when you are in clip display, you will export only what you have on the current clip, nothing more. In clip layer structure, actually, you will export the structure. It means you will export different stuff. Just let me show you. So you have different shows. You still have uh, single end sequences, and we also have all layers and frames, especially when you are using the PSD file format. So when you are using the PSD file format, well, actually, it will allow you to export in PSD and keep the structure of your layers. I mean, if I export a PSD in single image mode, I will export a PSD containing this image, this image, and this image, and even this image disabled. If I use export to um, sequence, it will create a file per image, I mean image 1, image 2, image 3, image 4, etc. And for each image, for each PSD file, I will have the structure for the layers. And if I choose all layers and frames, I will create one single PSD file with all images from each layer within the same PSD file. We also have other file format like the old TV Paint project. If, for example, you are working with people who are still using TV Paint 8 or TV Paint 9, you can send them the old TV Paint project like this. You also have the CSV file, which is really, really useful for people who are used to, to work in traditional animation with uh, X sheets, or if, for example, you are working with different animation software. So the CSV have different interest. First of all, it will export the different images, the different instances within folders, and each layer will have his own folder. So I mean, if here I export this project, I will have one folder for this layer, one folder for this layer, one layer for this layer, and another folder for this layer. And within each layer, I will have an image for this image, for this instance, for this instance and for these both instances. And in addition of creating different layers, it will also manage a CSV file, so it's an, uh, a sheet file that you can open with uh, something like Excel or any other sheet uh, software. And this sheet will be actually an X sheet, an exposure sheet where you have the name of all layers and the duration of each image, their exposure, and the name of the project and everything, just like a traditional exit. So if you are used to work with an exit, you can, I advise you sincerely to use the clip layer structure because you will really like this option.